Hi. Good evening. Last class, under differentiation, we have seen the rules of differentiation. When y is sum of two functions, then dy by dx is sum of the derivatives, du by dx plus dv by dx. If y is equal to constant multiple of a function, if c is attached to u, then to find a dy by dx, keep c as it is, differentiate u alone, differentiate u alone. If y is a product of two functions, then dy by dx is first function, derivative of the second function, plus second function, derivative of the first function. That is, keep u as it is, differentiate v, differentiate v. If v as it is, different y is a product of two functions, to find the derivative of dx, keep u as it is, differentiate v. Keep v as it is, differentiate u, differentiate u. This can be extended. If you have product of three functions, if you have product of three functions u, v, w, to find a dy by dx, to find a dy by dx, keep two functions as it is, differentiate the third function. Plus, keep u and w as it is, differentiate the second function. Plus, keep w as it is, and uh, v and w as it is, differentiate the first function. That means, here we are differentiating w, here we are differentiating v, here we are differentiating u. If y is a product of three functions, in each and every term, we differentiate w, v, u. Like that. Okay, this can be extended. This rule can be extended if y is a product of any number of functions. This is product rule. Quotient rule, if y is the quotient of two functions, one function over another function, if y is one function over another function, quotient of two functions, then to find the dy by dx, we follow the rule v square v into denominator of numerator minus numerator denominator of denominator. We follow this rule to differentiate quotient. One more instruction. If you are able to find the product as sum, try to express as sum, apply this rule. Number one. Similarly, if you are able to express this quotient as a product, apply product rule and find the differential coefficient. Or if it is possible, try to convert this as sum, apply sum rule. Apply sum rule. So all these things are possible. You can convert this as a product, you can convert this as sum, can find the average. Ultimately, you get same average. Other even otherwise, directly you can apply quotient rule and get the by dx. We have seen some problems under this. I think uh, I hope we have sent problems. Uh, we have done some problems under quotient rule and product rule. Okay. Now today we are discussing function of a function rule. We are discussing function of a function rule. I am classifying the functions under function of a function rule. I am classifying the functions under function of a function rule. First one. Type 1. Type 1 under function of a function. If y is some function, some function power n, if y is a function of the form fx power n, the fx can be some, fx can be product, fx can be quotient. You will be getting known functions there. If y is fx power n, to find a dy by dx, to find a dy by dx, we differentiate like this, n times fx power n minus 1, don't stop with this, into f dash x, into f dash x. I repeat again, to differentiate fx power n, to find a dy by dx, then y is fx power n, n fx power n minus 1, into different coefficient of the function within bracket f dash x. If you have sum here, use sum rule. If you have product, product rule, quotient, a quotient rule, like that. So, therefore, 
we are making use of this. We are solving some problems under this. Example, y is equal to, first problem, y is equal to sin x power 10. Some function, function is sin x here, sin x power 10. To find dy by dx for this function, for this function, we apply the rule 10 that function sin x power 9. 10 that function power 10 minus 1. Don't stop with this. Differentiate the function inside the bracket to write it here. That is cos x. So cos x is the different coefficient of sin x. So this is the differential coefficient of sin x power 10 sin x power 10. <coughs> Another example, y is equal to x sin inverse x power 100, x sin inverse x power 100. Now see here we are having inside the bracket a product. This is fx power n. These are the form fx power n. This comes under function of a function rule type 1. So, to find the dy by dx, we apply the same rule that is 100 that bracket x sin inverse x power 99 n fx power n minus 1. Don't stop with that. Differentiate x sin inverse x x sin inverse x is nothing but a product, x sin inverse x is nothing but a product. To differentiate x sin inverse x, necessarily we have to use product rule, that is x into different question of sin inverse x, 1 over root of 1 minus x square plus sin inverse x, different question of x is 1. So this bracket is nothing but different question of x sin inverse x x sin plus x is a product, therefore I have used product rule to differentiate x sin plus x. So therefore, ultimate differential coefficient of x sin plus x power 100 is 100 x sin plus x power 99 into x by root of 1 minus x square plus sin plus x into 1. So this is the ultimate differential coefficient of x sin plus x power 100. I will give another example. Y is equal to x e power 2x tan x power 25 x e power 2x tan x to the power 25. Now see here inside the bracket we are having product of three functions but ultimately y is of the form fx power n. Whenever you see a function of the form fx power n to find a dy by dx, to find a dy by dx, 25 x e power 2x tan x power 24 n fx power n minus 1. Don't stop that. Differentiate that bracket x e power 2x tan x using product rule, product of three functions, product of three functions. So, to differentiate product of three functions, you keep x e power 2x as it is, differentiate tan x, you get secant square x, one term plus. You keep x tan x as it is, differentiate e power 2x, you get 2 e power 2x, you get 2 e power 2x plus. Keep e power 2x tan x as it is differentiate x you get 1. So now differentiation, different coefficient of this is completed. They repeat again to differentiate this product power 25. This is the form fx power n, n fx power n minus 1. Differentiating this product, if you have product of three functions, keep two functions as it is, differentiate that function, keep two functions as it is, differentiate that function, keep two functions as it is, differentiate the third function. So every time, every term, we are giving two functions and we are differentiating the third function. So this is the different equation of x e power 2x tan x power 25. Now, another example. 
y is equal to 1 plus 2x by 1 minus 2x to the power 50. Now, our fx is nothing but quotient. fx happens to be the quotient here. 1 plus 2x by 1 minus 2x. fx power n. So, therefore, to find a dy by dx, to find a dy by dx, 50 1 plus 2x by 1 minus 2x to the power 49. Now we differentiate 1 plus 2x by 1 minus 2x. It happens to be quotient. Necessarily, we have to use quotient rule. So, quotient rule denominator square. Denominator differential coefficient of numerator that is 2 minus numerator differential coefficient of denominator that is minus 2 that is 0 minus 2 so therefore you will not simplify first know how to differentiate 50 that function power 49 n fx power n minus 1 different quotient of fx fx happens to be quotient necessarily we have to use quotient rule necessarily we have to use quotient rule so therefore this rule says if y is of the form fx power n, define dy by dx, n fx power n minus 1 into f dash x, f dash x is nothing but here it is uh, quotient, we are using quotient rule. Sometimes we can also have y is equal to 1 plus x e power x plus 2 cos x power 27. We are having sum. Sum of 1 x e power x to cos x to the power 27. So, to find the dy by dx, it is of the form fx power n. So, 27 1 plus x e power x plus 2 cos x to the power 26 times differentiate this function here 1 differentiating 1 you get 0 differentiating x e power x apply product rule x e power x plus e power x times 1 e power x into 1 plus differentiating 2 cos x you get minus 2 sin 2 cos x minus so this is the different question of complete different question of so, therefore, we have taken problems in each and every type. We have taken one problem. In this uh, type, uh, type 1, we are having fx power n, where fx is sum, fx is product, fx is quotient, and so on. Now, let us go to type 2. Let us go to type 2 of function of a function. Let us go to type 2 of function of a function. In type 2, we are getting function of the form log fx. See there fx power n. Here log fx. It is also a function of a function. It is also a function of a function. Log of fx. Now to differentiate log of fx. To find a divided by dx. The rule says 1 over that function. Anything you can find here. Any function, 1 over that. Don't stop with that. Differentiate the fx, you write f dash x. Differentiate the fx, you write f dash x. So, 1 over fx, f dash x. This is very, very simple. Log fx, 1 by fx, f dash x. Now, if you have a product here, we are making use of logarithmic properties. We know properties of logarithm. I will mention the properties. After that, we will solve problems under this type. The properties of logarithm says logarithm of product to any base, don't worry about the base, is sum of the logarithms. Log a plus log b. Logarithm of product is log a plus log b. If you have logarithm of fx dx, log fx plus log gx, then differentiate. If you have product, we can make use of this property. If you have quotient log a by b, 
to any base e, you write log a minus log b. So logarithm of product is sum of the logarithm. Logarithm of quotient is difference of the logarithm, and the logarithm of a to the power b is nothing but b log a to the base e. If you have e here, you write e here. So therefore, if you have a to the power b, the power can be taken outside the logarithm. Power can be inserted. That's the property. Therefore, log a to the base a to the power b is b log a to the base. After that, we can easily differentiate. And uh, you can uh, b is a function of x, a is a function of x. We can use product rule and differentiate, and so on. Now, we'll take some examples in this. First example, y is equal to logarithm of logarithm of sin x plus cos x. Simple function. We are taking simple function. Y is equal to to the base e. That is understood. When nothing is mentioned. Base e understood. So to differentiate logarithm of sin x plus cos x, to differentiate that is to find a dy by dx, one over that function, that bracketed function, sin x plus cos x, one over that function into different coefficient of sin x plus cos x. Differentiating sin x plus cos x, if sum of two functions, differentiating sin x you get cos x, differentiating cos x you get minus sin x, differentiating cos x you get minus sin x. <clears throat> so therefore, differentiating log of sin x plus cos x, one over sin x plus cos x. Yes, so cos x minus sin x, cos x minus sin x. Okay, now let us take. Uh, we'll uh, rush through this. I am revising everything. So to say, we can take uh, last class. If you have seen this, we'll go fast. We'll revise everything. Then uh, we'll take a new thing. Okay, very good. Now, if you have a second example, if y is equal to the logarithm of sin x cos x, if you have log of sin x cos x, first of all, we are simplifying. This is logarithm of product log a b. Log a b is log a plus log b. Log sin x plus log cos x. Log sin x plus log cos x. Now we can start differentiating this. dy by dx is one over sin x into cos x plus one over cos x into minus sin x. So therefore, log a b is log a plus log b, and uh, log a log sin x we are differentiating using function of function rule one by sin x cos x here one by cos x minus sin x. Another example, y is equal to log of the mass one minus x square by one plus x square. We are having quotient log of the mass a by b. So log of a by b, according to the property, is log a minus log b. Minus log log numerator minus log denominator. Now we are ready for differentiation. Differentiating this, you get one over one minus x square. Differentiating one minus x square minus two x minus. Differentiating log one plus x square one over one plus x square into two x. So this is the complete differential equation of. Log of one minus x square by one plus x square. Okay, so one more example in each one. Okay. Suppose you have y is equal to the logarithm of x power x. We take logarithm of x power x. According to third property, power can be taken outside the logarithm. Power can be taken. Outside the logarithm, x log x to the base e, x log x to the base e. Once power is taken outside the logarithm, dy by dx, dy by dx. Here to differentiate x log x, necessarily we have to use product rule. So x into x times one over x plus log x times log x to the base e times differentiating x we get one. Differentiating x we get one. So this is. 
the complete differential coefficient of log x power x. So apply the property, power can be taken out. So the log of the after that we are differentiating. <coughs> Very good. Now we are having a problem mixing all the properties. Mixing all the properties. For example, you get log of the mob 2 to the power x, 2 to the power x, 1 minus x divided by 1 minus x power 7 divided by 1 minus 3x power 8. Suppose we are having a complicated function like this to the base e that is understood. Base e is understood. Log of the mob 2 power x, 1 minus x power 7, 1 minus divided by 1 minus 3x power 8. First, log of the mob product log 2 power x plus log 1 minus x power 7. Denominator minus log 1 minus 3x power 8. At the same time, power is taken outside the log. So, therefore, applying all the properties at a time, I am using all the properties at a time. Log of the mob 2 power x is x log 2. Log of 2 power x is x log 2 plus because we are having a product here. Log of 1 minus x power 7. 7 times log of 1 minus x. 7 times log of 1 minus x. The denominator minus log 1 minus 3x power 8. You get minus 8 log 1 minus 3x. 8 log 1 minus 3x. Now, we are ready for differentiation. You can differentiate and get the answer. So, dy by dx is differentiating x log 2. Log 2 is a constant. Differentiating x, we get 1. Plus, differentiating log 1 minus x, we get 1 by 1 minus x into minus 1. Minus 1 is a different coefficient of 1 minus x. Here, minus 8, 1 over 1 minus 3x, differentiating 1 minus 3x, you get minus 3. So, this is the complete differential coefficient of log 2 power x, 1 minus x power 7, 1 minus 3x power 8. So, like this, second property, the second, uh, we can make use of first property, second property, third property of logarithms, right? Simplify, first simplify, after that we can differentiate. That is advantage. In logarithm, we can make use of properties, we can simplify and then differentiate. Then comes to type 3. Then comes to type 3 of function of a function. In type 3, you get y is equal to square root of f of x. y is equal to square root of f of x. Then dy by dx is dy by dx is 1 by 2 root f of x 2 times square root of f of x differentiating f of x you get f dash x differentiating f of x you get f dash x so therefore to differentiate square root of f of x 1 by 2 root f of x into f dash x example y is equal to square root of log x so, dy by dx is 1 by 2 root log x to the base e. Differentiating log x, you get 1 by x. Differentiating log x, you get 1 by x. Okay. So, therefore, remember square root of log any function, 1 by 2 root that function, differentiate that function right here. If you have product here, use product tool. If you have quotient, use quotient tool. If you have another function of function rule, how do I apply that? For example, for example, y is equal to square root of sin x power 3 plus cos x power 4. Sin x power 3, cos x power 3. These things we have not seen already. These things we have not seen already. Please note it. So, dy by dx, dy by dx. 1 over 2 root sin cube x plus cos x power 4 cos x power 4. Now to differentiate sin x power 3, 
to differentiate sin x power 3, definitely we have to make use of type 1 under function of function rule. That is 3 sin x power 2, 3 into fx power 2, differentiating sin x you get cos x plus to differentiate cos x power 4, 4 cos x power 3 into differentiation of cos x minus sin x. This is very, very important. So, in type, in each type, we can get the previous types also. In each type, we can get previous types also. I will give another example. y is equal to square root of log sin x, square root of log sin x to the base e. dy by dx. Whenever you find square root of a function, 1 by 2 root that function. 1 by 2 root log sin x to the base. Don't stop with that. Differentiate log sin x. Differentiate a function inside a square root. Using function of a function rule. Second uh, type. Log fx. 1 by sin x into cos x. This is the differential coefficient of log sin x. So, therefore, remember, whenever you have square root of f of x, 1 by 2 root f x, differentiate that function, write it here. So, you may, uh, you may have to use type 1, type 2, all these things in one type. Okay. Another example, y is equal to square root of, square root of uh, x square, e power 5x, x square e power 5x. So, what we do to differentiate 1 over 2 root x square e power 5x, 1 over 2 root x square e power 5x. Now, we differentiate a function in inside the square root. Since it is a product, we have to use product rule. x square e power 5x into 5 plus e power 5x differentiating x square you get 2x. So, this is the complete differentiation of square root of x square e power 5x. Now, you can get uh, everything inside log of fx, fx power n, everything you can get here. y is equal to square root of 1 minus x by 1 plus x. So, dy by dx 1 over 2 root 1 minus x by 1 plus x. 2 root that function. Different question of 1 minus x by 1 plus x. Since it is a quotient, we use quotient rule. 1 plus x whole square. 1 plus x minus 1 minus 1 minus x into 1. And minus x into 1. Get denominator square, denominator, differentiation of numerator minus 1 minus numerator, differentiation of denominator 1. Like that. So, therefore, if you have square root of any function, in the function you can get type 1, type 2, all things. Accordingly, we write the differential coefficient. Okay. Type 3 is over. Now, type 4. Type 4 under function of a function rule. That is e to the power f of x. In type 4, we get e to the power f of x. So, to get that, uh, to, if you get e power f of x, to find a dy by dx, you got e power f of x, e power f x, e power f x. Differentiate f x, e f dash x. I repeat again, if you have e power f x, e power f x. Differentiate f x, f dash x. If you have log f x, 1 by f x, f dash x. If you have square root of f x, 1 by 2 root f x, f dash x. If you have f x power n, n f x power n minus 1, f dash x. So, if you have e power f x, e power f x into f dash x. Example y is equal to e power log x dy by dx is e power log x 
Differentiate log x, you get 1 log x. Differentiate log x, you get 1 log x. So, differentiating e power log x, e power log x into 1 by x. e power x log x. e power x log x. So, divided by dx, e power x log x. Differentiate this fx. This is the form e power fx. That fx is of the product, is the form. We are getting a product here. Therefore, necessarily we have to use product rule. x times 1 over x plus log x times 1. Log x times 1. So, we get e power x log x. The definition of x log x is x times 1 by x plus log x times 1. This is nothing but the different question of x log x. Since you are having product, I am using product rule. Like that. Well, sometimes we are having y is equal to e power uh, tan x power 7. e power fx. Our fx is tan x power 7. So, therefore, to differentiate e power tan x power 7, you get e power tan x power 7. Now, we differentiate tan x power 7 using type 1 fx power n, tan x power n, tan x power 7, 7 tan x power 6, differentiating tan x, you get secant square x, you get secant square x. I repeat again, we are running e power fx, e power fx, we have to differentiate tan x power 7, tan x power 7 happens to be type 1, so 7 tan x power 6, do not stop with that, differentiate tan x, you get secant. So, we differentiate until we get the final argument. So, final argument is x, we get the second square x, differentiating x, you get 1 like that. Okay, now we are having y is equal to e to the power square root of sin inverse x. dy by dx e power square root of sin inverse x e power square root of sin inverse x now we differentiate square root of sin inverse x this comes under a third type differentiating square root of sin inverse x 1 by 2 root sin inverse x 1 by 2 root sin inverse x don't stop with that differentiate sin inverse x 1 by root of 1 minus x square. 1 by root of 1 minus x square. So, this is ultimate differential coefficient of e power square root of sin inverse x. So, e power square root of sin inverse x, differentiating square root of sin inverse x, 1 by 2 root sin inverse x, differentiating sin inverse x, you get 1 by root of 1 minus x square. Okay. So, in, in now combining all these four types, we can solve some problems. Before that, we can get a functions of this type, one function, another function, another function. So, we are having, first function is f, argument for this function is g of h of x, second function is g, the argument of g is h of x, the third function is h, the argument of h is x. So, we differentiate using function of a function rule, depending on the function f, g and h. For example, here to differentiate, to differentiate, first to differentiate f. While differentiating f, differentiate along with the argument f of g of h of x is nothing but f dash g of h of x. First, I am differentiating f, you get f dash. You write in the argument. Now, you differentiate the argument. g of h of x. g of h of x, you get g dash h of x. You get g dash h of x. Write along with the argument. Differentiate along with the argument. g dash h of x. Now, you differentiate h of x. Differentiating h of x, you get h dash x. Differentiating h x, you get h dash x. Differentiating x, we get 1. You differentiate until 
you differentiate a final argument x until you differentiate a final argument x. So this is function of a function of a function rule. First function is f, second function is g, third function is h. Ultimately, argument is x, you get one differentiating argument. Example, y is equal to sin 3x. y is equal to sin 3x. First function is sin. You get cos 3x. Don't stop with that. Differentiate that argument 3x, you get 3. Differentiate the argument 3x, you get 3. So, differentiating sin 3x, you get cos 3x into 3. Next example, differentiate secant x by 2. Differentiating, we know differentiating secant x, we get secant x tan x. Differentiating secant x by 2, differentiate along with the argument, I told you. That means, differentiating secant x by 2, you get secant x by 2 tan x by 2. Secant x by 2, differentiating secant x, you get secant x tan x. Differentiating secant x by 2, you get secant x by 2 tan x by 2. Now, we differentiate x by 2, you get half. Differentiating the final argument, you get half. Differentiating the final argument, you get half. So, therefore, Differentiation of secant x by 2 is half of secant x by 2 tan x by 2. Okay. Now, slowly we will complicate. Slowly we will complicate. For example, if you have sin inverse x cube. Let us take sin inverse x cube. We are having, first function is sin inverse, inverse function. Argument of that function is x cubed. For the x cubed argument is x. For x cubed argument is x. For that, we know differentiating sin as x, 1 over root of 1 minus x square. If you have x, you get x square. If you have x cubed, while differentiating, while differentiating, differentiating sin inverse x, you get 1 minus x square. Instead of x, we are having argument x cubed, therefore x cubed whole square. You get x cubed whole square. If you have x, you get x square here. If you have x cubed, you get x cubed whole square. Now we differentiate that argument x cubed. Differentiating that argument, you get 3x square. Differentiating x, we get 1. Differentiating x, we get 1. So we differentiate function of a function of a function like this. I'll give another example y is equal to tan inverse log sin x. Tan inverse log sin It's a very good example of the function of a function rule. First function we see is tan inverse. Second function is log. Argument of log is sin. Argument for sin is x. So therefore, first of all, while differentiating, while differentiating, we know differentiation of tan inverse x is 1 over 1 plus argument of tan inverse x whole square. That is, argument of tan inverse x is log sin x. You get log sin x whole square. Log sin x. 1 by 1 plus argument square. Argument is this for tan inverse function. Tan 1 by 1 plus log sin x whole square. Now we differentiate this argument log sin x. It is function of a function. Differentiating log sin x, you get 1 over sin x. Differentiating sin x, you get cos x. So, differentiating sin x, we get cos x. Differentiation of x is 1. Differentiation of x is 1. So, this is ultimate different question of tan inverse log sin x. I will give another example. y is equal to sin of 2 times tan 1 by x. 
sin of 2 tan 1x. First function we see is sin function. First function we see is sin function. Sin, differentiating sin of any function, you get cosine of that function. Write down the argument also. You get 2 tan 1 by x. You get 2 tan 1 by x. Cos 2 tan 1 by x. Now, the argument of sin is this 2 tan 1 by x. Differentiate that 2 tan 1 by x. 2 times. 2 is a constant. We are retaining constant. This differentiate tan 1 by x. You get secant square 1 by x. You get secant square 1 by x. Now, we differentiate 1 by x. 1 by x means x power minus 1. You get minus 1 by x square. We get minus 1 by x square. Differentiating x, we get 1. So, therefore, I repeat again. Sin, you get cos of 2 tan minus x. Differentiate 2 tan 1 by x, 2 secant square 1 by x. Differentiate argument 1 by x, minus 1 by x square. So, ultimately, uh, we get uh, cos 2 tan 1 by x, 2 secant square 1 by x, minus 1 by x square. So, this is a function of a function rule. So, we have seen varieties of function of function rule. I will repeat again. One is fx power n. One is fx power n. Second one is log of fx. Third one is square root of f of x. Fourth one is e power. So, next one is e to the power a of x. And finally, you can get combination of 1, 2, 3 and 4. One function, inside another function, inside another function. In, inside you can get another function, L of x, something like that. So, therefore, we can get a continuous function. One will be like this, other will be like this, other will be like this, other will be like this. So, you can get in this are these types, in this are three types, in this three types, like that. We can get a combination of all these function of function rule. So you must know how to differentiate when complicated functions are given. Okay, so we have seen fx power n log fx square root of f of x and e power fx also and finally f of g of x, f dash g of x, g dash x, differentiating x we get 1. All these things we have seen just now. Now we will take an implicit function. Now let me explain the concept of implicit function. So to study implicit function you must know what is the explicit function. You must know the difference between the explicit function and the implicit function. Under explicit function, y is given directly in terms of x. Y is given directly in terms of x. Y is given explicitly in terms of x. When x is known, y is known immediately. Whereas here, x and y are connected by a functional relation x and y are connected by a function relation. I repeat again. Under the explicit function, y is given explicitly in terms of x. Here, x and y are connected by a relation. Example, for the explicit function, y is equal to sin x. y is equal to x cube. y is equal to log x. y is given directly in terms of x. Here, x square y plus y x is equal to x. x and y are connected. y is not given in terms of x. x square plus y square is equal to x. x and y are connected, but y is not given in terms of x. 
root x plus root y is equal to root a. x and y are connected, but y is not given in terms of x. So therefore, this is implicit function. Under implicit function, x and y are connected by a relation, a functional relation. x square y plus y x is equal to x. x square plus y square is equal to x y. Root x plus root y is equal to root a. Not like this. Here y is given directly in terms of x. Whenever implicit function is given, how to find a dy by dx? That's a problem. So, whenever implicit function is given, assuming y is a function of x, you differentiate term by term. Assuming y is a function of x, differentiate term by term. Let us take some examples. Let us take some examples. x square plus y square is equal to a square x square plus y square is equal to a square. Now, y is not given directly in terms of x. We can differentiate term by term. Differentiate term by term. Differentiate term by term. Assuming y is a function of x. Differentiating x square, you get 2x. y is a function of x. Therefore, differentiating y square 2y, 2 into y power 2 minus 1, that is 2y. Differentiate y, you get dy by dx. That is very important. Differentiating y square, you get 2y. Different question of y is dy by dx. That is equal to 0. So cancel 2, 2. So from this, y times dy by dx is equal to minus x. Therefore, dy by dx is minus x power 4. This is the complete different equation of x square plus y square is equal to a square. Now, we are not uh, converting y in terms of x. We are, suppose we are not converting y in terms of x, we get dy by dx like this, keeping this as implicit function. Suppose we are expressing y as a function of x, find dy by dx, you get a very same answer. You get the very same answer. For example, in the same example, in the same example, x square plus y square is equal to a square. <coughs> y is equal to y square is equal to a square minus x square. Y is equal to root of a square minus x square. Y square is a square minus x square. Y square is a square minus x square. So y is equal to square root of a square minus x square. Now differentiate dy by dx. Apply the function of function rule square root of any function. 1 by 2 root a square minus x square. Differentiate a square minus x square. a square is a constant, you get minus 2x. 2, 2 gets cancelled. Root of a square minus x square stands for y, you get minus x by y. The very same answer you get. You get the very same answer. Instead, directly you can differentiate, get dy by dx, you get the same answer. So, therefore, sometimes it is possible to convert y in terms of x, sometimes it is not possible. In that case, Keep that function as it is, differentiate term by term, keeping y as a function of x, you get that. Another example, xy is equal to c square. Here y is not given in terms of x, of course it is possible for us to convert y in terms of x. So what we do is, x into, use product tool, because xy, to differentiate xy, x into dy by dx plus y into 1 is equal to 0. I am using product rule because it is a product. y is a function of x. x into dy by dx plus y into 1. So therefore, x to dy by dx is minus y. dy by dx is nothing but minus y by x. It is nothing but y by x. So bring y that side, minus y, divided by x, you get minus y by x. Another example x cubed plus y cubed is equal to 3axy. Find the dy by dx for this implicit function. Differentiating 3x square, differentiating y cubed, 3y square dy by dx, 3y square dy by dx. 3a is a constant, differentiating xy, product rule, x into dy by dx plus y into 1, y into 1. 3, 3, 3. We are cancelling from all the terms. 
grouping the terms containing dy by dx. Here it contains dy by dx, this term contains dy by dx. So I am grouping the terms containing dy by dx. You get y square here, you get ax. When it comes to other side, you get minus ax. Grouping the terms con not containing dy by dx, you get minus x square, minus of x square plus ay. Away. Therefore, dy by dx for this implicit function is minus of x square plus ay divided by y square minus ax. So, this is correct dy by dx for the given function. So, if you have any function, you can get dy by dx. So, x square plus y square is equal to a square, x y is equal to c square x cube plus y cube is 3x square. Here y is not expressed in terms of x. Hence, we differentiate term by term, assuming y is a function of x. Here's an example. Example x cube plus y cube is equal to 3xy. Just now we have done this example. Now, I will give you some more examples. Root x plus root y is equal to root a root x plus root y is equal to root a. Differentiating root x, 1 by 2 root x. Differentiating root y, 1 by 2 root y into dy by dx. Function of a function rule. Root of any function, 1 by 2 root that function, differentiating y you get dy by dx. Differentiating root a is 0. So, 1 by 2, 1 by 2, it is cancelled. So, therefore, dy by dx. 1 by root y is equal to minus 1 by root x, therefore minus root y by root x. Grouping carefully, you get this. You get this. Now, we are having some complicated function. Suppose we have some complicated function. x power y is equal to y power x x power y is equal to x, y power x. One function power another function, we cannot differentiate, there is no rule. Directly, we cannot uh, to differentiate x power y, we cannot apply the rule y x power y minus, that is not allowed, because power is a function of x. After this, we will take log of differentiation. In this case, we convert this as implicit function, this almost it is an implicit function. We convert this so that we are in a differential uh, form, that is we get the exact differential function, differentiable function. Taking logarithm, y log x is equal to x log y. Taking logarithm, power can be taken as logarithm, y log x is x log y. Now, this is completely, we can differentiate, assuming y is a function of x, using product to left hand side, product to right hand side. So, differentiating y log x, y into 1 over x plus log x times dy by dx. I am using product tool to left hand side, y into 1 over log x into dy by dx. Here, right hand side, x into 1 over y dy by dx because differentiating log y, 1 by y dy by dx plus log y. Differentiating x, we get 1. And log y. Differentiating x, we get 1. I repeat again. We are taking logarithm. This becomes y log x, x log y. Use product rule. 1 in y into 1 by x. Plus log x into dy by dx. Differentiating y, you get dy by dx. x into 1 by y, dy by dx. Plus log y into 1. Grouping the terms containing dy by dx. Grouping the terms containing dy by dx. dy by dx times log x minus x by y is equal to log y minus y by x. Therefore, dy by dx is log y minus y by x by log x minus x by y. Therefore, ultimate dy by dx for this problem is nothing but log y minus y by x divided by 
log x minus x by y. So we can easily find a derivative x even if you have complicated functions of this form. Sometimes e power x minus y is equal to x power again we are having a complicated function here necessarily we take a logarithm e power x minus y taking logarithm you get x minus y log e to the base e y log x to the base e log e to the base e y therefore x minus y is equal to y log x x is equal to y plus y log x y into 1 plus log x therefore y is equal to x by 1 plus log x now from the given problem which is an implicit function we are getting y as a function of x we are converting implicit function into explicit function after that make use of after that you make use of quotient rule to find the dy by dx that is 1 plus log x whole square 1 plus log x differentiating x you get 1 minus x into differentiating 1 plus log x you get 1 by x so this is dy by dx for the given function so when a problem is complicated we can take logarithm if it is possible so we can take logarithm and uh, easily we can group we can add directly can differentiate otherwise convert y as a function of x you can get the dy by dx <laughs> Okay, now another example you can take, one more example. y square is equal to 4ax, it's a parabola. We can find a dy by dx for this parabola. It's an implicit function 2y dy by dx is equal to 4a into 1. 4a is a constant. Therefore, dy by dx. For this function is equal to 4a by 2y that is 2a by 2y cancelling 2 cancelling 2 we get 2a by y so therefore there are many implicit functions you can easily find a by dx without any difficulty assuming y is a function of x if you have a product we can make use of product rule and differentiate okay so we stop with this today Next class, we are discussing parametric equations. We are going, uh, discussing parametric equations, and uh, after that, after that, some examples under that, and uh, after that, we we'll take logarithmic differentiation. Very important. After discussing logarithmic differentiation, uh, we will take higher order derivatives. After that, okay. Next class, we are covering uh, all these things. It will go fast so that uh, uh, immediately we can switch over to integration after that. Okay, I will stop with this. Next class we will continue. Next class we will continue with the parameter equations. Any question you can ask.